Lebanese, Lebanese Prime Minister Hariri, can you say definitively from this podium that he has been not, not been held hostage by the Saudis? And does the President plan to speak to Prime Minister Hariri at all? Uh, I'm not aware of any uh, anticipated conversations. That's something I'd have to check on and get back to you, and I don't have any further comment uh, beyond that at this point right now. And I would refer you to the State Department on specifics of that. Cecilia. Thanks, uh, and the allegation made by his accuser. Is it also fair to investigate this president and the allegations of sexual misconduct made against him by more than a dozen women? Look, I think that this was covered uh, pretty extensively during the campaign. Uh, we addressed that then. The American people, I think, spoke very loud and clear when they elected this president. But how is this different? Uh, I think in one case, specifically, uh, Senator Franken has admitted wrongdoing and the President hasn't. I think that's a very clear distinction. Major. So I want to revisit something we discussed yesterday. Uh, you said one of the ways that Alabama voters might be able to figure out if these allegations against Roy Moore are true is in the court of law. That's a direct quote from you. There's no criminal means by which that could happen. So are you suggesting that Roy Moore sued the accusers in order to hash this out in court? Uh, I mean, that would be something that I would refer to him to make that decision. That's not something I would be able to advise him on. When you talked about I'm saying that was one. I said that's one option, one way to determine uh, that process, but that would be a decision that he would have to make, certainly not one I'm going to make. Because during the campaign, as you well remember, then candidate Trump said after the election he would sue all the women who have accused him of sexual misconduct and that you have, from the podium, deemed all liars. He hasn't done that. Why hasn't he done that? Uh, I haven't asked him that question. I'd have to ask him and let you know uh, why he hasn't chosen to take that path. I'm simply stating that's an option that Roy Moore has on the table. Jeff. Uh, Sarah, some critics have said that it was hypocritical of the president to tweet about Al Franken and not weigh in on Roy Moore. He has weighed on Roy, on, on Roy Moore. He did it while he was on a foreign trip in Asia. I did it repeatedly yesterday. In fact, I took about 15 questions on that topic uh, and only one on Al Franken. So to suggest that this White House and specifically that this president hasn't weighed in uh, is just inaccurate and wrong. He weighed in. He said if the allegations are true, he should step aside. He also weighed in when he supported the RNC's decision to withdraw resources from the state of Alabama. Uh, it's just a simply uh, inaccurate statement to make about the president. Sarah. Um, can you tell us whether the president believes the women who are making these allegations against Roy Moore, and would he be willing to ask the Alabama governor to delay the election or take a step like that to try to intervene uh, in this electoral process in Alabama? The president certainly finds the allegations extremely troubling, as I stated yesterday, uh, and he feels like it's up to the governor and the state, uh, the people in the state of Alabama, to make a determination on whether or not they delay that election or whether or not they support and vote for Roy Moore. Matthew. Thanks, Sarah. Uh, in light of the national discussion about the importance of taking these kinds of accusations seriously, I wanted to check: is it still the White House? position that all the women who have accused the president of sexual misconduct are lying? Uh, the president uh, has spoken about this uh, multiple times throughout the campaign and has denied uh, all of those allegations. Blake. Thanks, hey, Sarah. Let me ask you about something else, the uh, pending potential AT&T and Time Warner merger. The president had said on the campaign trail back in October 2016, and I quote here, he said it was a deal we will not approve in my administration because it's too much concentration of power in the hands of too few. Does the president still, still feel that way? Uh, the president was asked about this uh, a few days ago, uh, maybe a week ago, while we were on Air Force One, and I'd refer you back to those comments. April. Sarah, is this an uncomfortable conversation about these sexual allegations for this White House, be it Al Franklin or be it Roy Moore? I think it's an uncomfortable conversation for the country. Uh, I think that this is something that is being discussed pretty widely, and we certainly think that it should be taken very seriously. And it's one of the reasons I stand up here and answer your questions every day, uh, and will continue to do so and continue to address them. Um, obviously, it's something that should be looked at, and I think it should be looked at widespread, not just uh, in the political sphere, but in the business atmosphere uh, and across the board in this country, and something we certainly, again, take seriously. Alex. Well, I'm I talked to Hillary Clinton. Clinton. I talked today. to Hillary Clinton today April. about the president's past and going back to what Matthew said. She said, "Look, I worry about everything from his past because it tells you how he behaves in the present and will in the future." What do you say to that as relates to 
these allegations against the president. I think Hillary Clinton probably should have dealt with some of those of her own issues before addressing this president. Alex. Uh, two questions on well, taxes and immigration. A recent uh, Quinnipiac University poll said 61% uh, of voters think the Republican tax plan will benefit the wealthy. Well, the White House has pitched uh, this plan as a working class tax cut. Why the disconnect? And then on immigration. Let me uh, answer that first question. Okay. Uh, look. We've actually argued that this tax plan benefits all Americans. That's the point of it. Uh, specifically, and our priority is to target middle class Americans and make sure that that is addressed first and that those people uh, are prioritized in any piece of legislation first either the House or the Senate. Uh, but at the same time, we want all Americans to benefit by a growing economy and a tax system that actually works for our country versus one that penalizes people. We're going to keep moving just because we're tight. John? Let me come back and ask you the same thing I asked Kevin. You've got six Republican senators either no or seriously on the fence here. Can you win enough over in order to pass this? And if the president gets snookered again by the Senate, What's his reaction going to be? Uh, we certainly are still very confident that we're going to get this package passed, and we'd love to see some of the Democrats come on board and support this historic piece of legislation that we feel will be one of the uh, great legacies of this presidency. The fact that you didn't get any Democrats in the House, how does that pretend for getting them to the Senate? There's always hope. We'll uh, hold out hope that Democrats in the Senate uh, want to put partisan politics aside and put the people of this country first. Uh, we haven't ruled it out, and we're certainly going to keep pushing forward, and we're so confident we're going to get it done. It's safe to say the president will not be pleased if he gets snookered by the Senate again? Uh, I think the American people will be the ones that won't be pleased, because they're going to be the ones that lose out the most if this doesn't go forward. Talib. put out a uh, disaster funding request for about $44 billion today. Um, it's much less than what a number of different uh, governors and uh, officials in the various infected uh, territories and states have requested. Can you explain sort of why the, the, the number is so low compared to what uh, the local officials say they need? I, I don't think $44 billion is a low amount. Um, and my guess is if you ask any average citizen across this country, they wouldn't feel like it's low either. Up until this point, Texas has not put any uh, state dollars into this process. We feel strongly that they should step up and play a role and work with the federal government. Uh, in this process, we did a thorough assessment, and that was completed, and this was the number that we put forward to Congress today. Yeah. More requests forward in the future, uh, specifically for Puerto Rico. There. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, at this point, the request that went in today of the roughly $44 billion uh, primarily addresses Texas and Florida. Those storms took place ahead of Puerto Rico, and the assessment for Puerto Rico hasn't been completed yet. Once that's done, we fully anticipate that there will be additional requests at that time. Kristen? Sure, thank you. Bannon is sending a strong message to the establishment to back off of Roy Moore. Is the president's allegiance to Steve Bannon in any way impacting his response? Uh, the president doesn't have an allegiance to Steve Bannon. The president has an allegiance to the people of this country and nothing else. Has he spoken at all to Steve Bannon or any Not outside advisors? Not that I'm this? aware of. How concerned is he, Sarah, about losing this seat to the Democratic <coughs> candidate who right now, according to the polls, is leading? Look, I, I think that the president is less concerned about the seat and more focused on uh, the policy and the legislation that we're pushing through right now, like tax reform. John? Uh, in regards to that uh, question regarding the supplemental request the president and the administration has put forward, $44 billion. Puerto Rico has requested uh, $94 billion. Are they going to get somewhere along that order? I think half of the island is still without electricity. As I said, we're going to wait until that assessment is complete, and we'll make a determination at that point uh, and see what the best path forward is. Did the President notify Governor Sorry, Abbott, John, I'm going to keep did the, no, President notify Governor Abbott uh, of the John, lesser I, amount that, that he's, uh, that he's put forward? Uh, yesterday, uh, the Joint uh, Investigative Mechanism uh, was vetoed by Russia at uh, the UN Security Council. And Ambassador Haley tweeted afterward that the veto proves that Russia cannot be trusted uh, as a partner going forward in trying to solve the political situation in Syria. Uh, does the president have any response to the veto first? Um, what is the U.S. view going forward of how chemical weapons uh, will be investigated and dealt with in Syria? And is it the U.S. <coughs> now that Russia cannot be a partner in trying to solve uh, or 
do a next day uh, political uh, situation. Uh, I think by the actions that the president's taken, uh, specific to chemical weapons, I think he's shown uh, his position on that with the uh, strike in Syria earlier this year. In terms of uh, Russia's veto, it's certainly not one we support. We do hope that moving forward, uh, they want to get on board and work with us on this. Um, but at the same time, this isn't something that we support their decision on. Stephen? There's been some extraordinary pushback on the administration's decisions with respect to uh, <coughs> elephant trophies and, and, and hunting of, of lions and elephants in Africa. Can you shed some light on the decisions the administration has made and what you make of the pushback? Yeah, this is uh, actually uh, due to a review that started back in 2014 under the previous administration uh, done by career officials at the Fish and Wildlife Service. This review established that both uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe had met new standards, strict international conservation standards that allowed Americans to resume hunting in those countries. Uh, a ban on importing elephant ivory from all countries remains in place, but again, all of this was based on a study that was conducted uh, that started back to the previous administration and done by career officials. Darlene? The Senate tax bill has a, a tax break for corporate jets. How does that help the middle class? Uh, as Kevin stated before, this administration has laid out the priorities that we want to see reflected in this legislation. Uh, we're going to continue to fight for those priorities and let the legislative process work through uh, in terms of those specific pieces. That's something I would refer you uh, to members of the House and Senate on that. But our focus is on making sure these priorities are answered and met. We'll make this the last Thanks, one. Sir. Yesterday on Jared Kushner and those campaign emails, that Senate committee, um, they're asking for those emails in the Russia investigation. You punt it to the Kushner's attorney. Today, what's the White House reaction to those previously undisclosed emails? Look, that, uh, as I said, they were going to put out a statement. They did, and I would refer you back to that on uh, anything specific to that uh, inquiry. Thanks so much, guys. Hope you have